Hi, I'm Rick Zanotti, and this is episode 15 of Captivating, the Adobe Captivate podcast. Captivate, like PowerPoint, uses the slide metaphor to represent its information on the screen. When you edit in Captivate, you're editing slides. You're moving slides around, you're adding content to individual slides. In this episode, we're going to talk about slides, what their properties are, and how to use them. All right, here we are in Captivate, and I've got a presentation opened with about six slides in it. And when you're in storyboard mode, as we are here, just like PowerPoint, I can grab slides and move them around and pretty, mu pretty much order them any which way I want. I can insert slides here. I can record new slides after this. So it gives us a powerful interface for moving things around. Now, to actually get into slide properties, I can do one of several things. I can double click on the slide, which takes us to edit view, and now we're editing that specific slide. And on the left here, you see a film strip of all the slides in the piece. These are thumbnails of each individual slide, so you can see them, just like PowerPoint. Now, if I double click on a slide, that brings up the slide's properties. I'll escape out of that. I can also do that by going to the timeline and clicking on the slide. And again, that brings up the slide properties. And finally, I can go to the slide menu and click on properties. And all three methods will bring up slide properties. So let's go back to our slide and double click on it in the thumbnail view. And let's look at some of the options. Now, the first thing you want to do is look at the label and rename your slide. If you're an instructional designer and you have a naming convention for your slides, for example, L01, P01, Lesson 1, Page 1, I'd advise everyone to label all of your slides. Don't leave anything unlabeled. And the reason for this is, is multi-purpose. One, you can make sure that people are reviewing and identifying the correct slide. Two, for branching sake, when you're branching to a slide that you've got named, for example, let's say I want to call this main menu, you'll know where to go very easily inside your piece. And when you're looking in branching mode, this will make a lot of sense. Now, let's move forward. Um, this is the amount of time, the display time is the amount of time that the timeline has for this particular slide. In this case, we're at the default of three seconds, and we'll just leave it at that for now. When you come into a slide, you can show it with a transition. In other words, you can have lines, fade, fly, iris, there's several transitions. As far as quality goes, that refers to your graphic quality. When you publish, how clean will those graphics look? If you're doing a software simulation, you don't need extremely good or sharp graphics. You need something that's, that's pretty clean, but, but not large. So 8-bit graphics are good for that. Uh, optimized just gives you the best quality of graphics overall for your piece. JPEG is used if you've got a lot of uh, pictures. And high quality would be used 24-bit. Uh, would be used if you're doing, let's say, a high-level presentation or sales piece or something that really needs the high-quality look. In this case, we'll just leave it to low 8-bit. Colors will default to either the project color, which you set in your preferences, or you could set a custom color right here for the slide. In this case, we'll say the slide has a black background. If I click here, I can choose other background colors. You can hide a slide. You can also lock a slide so that nobody else can move it or touch it. I can change my background image by adding a new image. And this will merge that image that we select into our background. And you can do this also by going into the slide and inserting a graphic and then merging it into the background. Now, when you come into a slide, there are many properties that you can actually do or actions. Uh, it defaults to continue. That means when you come into the slide, it will continue across the timeline until the slide is done. You can also open a URL or file. You can open another Captivate project. You could send email to somebody. You can execute JavaScript, which is used often if we're doing pop-up windows or we're trying to close a window that's been popped up in an LMS. You can execute an advanced action. Now, an advanced action could be any one of these or a group of. You can show or hide. You can enable an object. 
you can disable, you can assign a variable a property, you can increment or decrement the variable property, or you can do multiple actions which will allow you to do a group of these into one set of actions which you can run as many times as you'd like. When you exit a slide, you have the same exact options. So Captivate gives you a lot of power coming into and out of a slide to really control not only the flow of the piece, but what happens within the piece and how you assign variables and actions. That pretty much sums up what we need to know about slides for Captivating. I'm Rick Zanotti. Thanks for watching and subscribing. And remember, send any comments or requests to captivating at relate.com. Thank you.